So Euler's method for solving differential equations, it's a method to approximate kind of like a function value that we've been finding in class where it's like, here's a derivative, here's initial function value, find a future function value. It's the same deal, only the derivatives we have, they're a little bit more complicated. And I'll show you in a second. And Euler's method, it's essentially just a bunch of linear approximations in a row. And you guys know how to do linear approximations. It was in unit six. So let's see what I mean by that. Delete things. Kind of like, I want to get rid of this. It's like in the computer. Sprint stamp. I can't. So we're just stuck with it, whatever. All right. So here's like an approximation that you know how to do. If f of 1 equals 3 and f prime of 1 equals 2, approximate f of 3. We should remember how to do this. Really, all we do is we say, okay, well, since I know the point and I know the, the slope of the tangent at that point, and since a tangent equation kind of mimics my initial equation at points, I can use just the straight line developed by the tangent equation to approximate missing values, right? So I go y minus y1 is equal to my slope times x minus x1. I plug in 3 for x, and I get an approximate value for y. Okay, so f of 3, we can say, is approximately 7. Questions about that? We remember that stuff? Maybe with the review, that's fine. Now, what can we say about the accuracy of my approximation? Yeah, it's probably not going to be very accurate, you know? Why? Because it's pretty far away from the point. I mean, it might be. And if we don't know any other information, like if I knew what my derivative function was, if I knew f prime of x was equal to, you know, 2x minus 1, well, then I don't even have to approximate f of 3. I can find it using the method that we've been doing in class, the whole fundamental of theorem of calculus method, or by just taking the antiderivative, because I can take the antiderivative of that. Okay, but I don't know that, so I can't do it. Okay, well, we're going to have situations where we'll know a function value and we'll know a derivative. But your derivative is going to be tough. It's a tough derivative. It could be like an implicit derivative. Take this derivative, dy dx equals y minus x. That's something where we kind of don't know right now how to take the antiderivatives of y minus x's. You won't ever find out how to do that. So we're kind of stuck in a situation where I can't take the antiderivative, and I also can't find, like, the area under the curve y minus x because it's not a function, you know? It's just, uh, you know, it's an implicit equation, okay? But it gives me at least more information than just, like, my slope at the point 1, 3 is 2. Like in the previous example, I said, like, f prime of 1 is uh, 2. Well, that's the same thing here. F prime of 1 will be 2. So if we have this equation of this derivative, 
we can kind of use these linear approximations to get a fairly good approximation for f of 3. Now what we're going to do, be doing is taking steps to get to f of 3. So the first one will be like a one step, which says, hey, I know that I have the point 1, 3 and the slope of the tangent at 1, 3 would just be plugging in 3 minus 1. The slope would be 2. I'll say, okay, let's use the tangent equation at the point 1, 3 to figure out what the point, which is a slope of 2, so maybe a little steeper. figure out what an approximation for the point at 3 will be. And this is what you just did. So you don't have to write it down. You know, it would be y minus 3 is equal to 2 times 3 minus 1. Um, and you got y is equal to 7. Okay, so that's a one-step method of finding this approximation. But since I know a derivative of my function, I could actually use this some more. And instead of maybe just going one step, let's kind of work our way to a better approximation of f of 3. Let's go and let's do two steps. Now, what do I mean by two steps? is let's figure out what f of 2 is, an approximation for f of 2, because f of 2 is closer to f of 1, right? So the linear approximation is going to be better for f of 2. And then after I have that better point, I will do another linear approximation to get to 3. So two-step, let's approximate f of 2 then approximate f of 3 from f of 2. Okay, so I'm going to start by just saying, okay, I have the point 1, 3. I know that the derivative is 2 at the point 1, 3. I'm going to find f of 2, an approximation for it, using the, these linear approximations. So I got y minus 3 is equal to my slope 2 times 2 minus 1. I get y is equal to 5. So all of a sudden, I have 2, 5. Okay, and that's right on the line of this. So. Right in between. Okay, well now, I'm just going to go one more step and say, you know what? Since 2 is closer to 3, and since our approximation to get to f of 2 is going to be just a regular one-step approximation to get f of 3, I'm going to use the point 2, 5. And I'm going to use the knowledge of my derivative that at the point 2, 5, I'm going to know what the slope of the tangent would be if the point 2, 5 was on my original function by plugging in 5 minus 2 into this derivative. It's a tough implicit derivative, but it can give me information. And all of a sudden, I know that the slope, if the point 2, 5 is on my function, is 3. I can use that point and that slope to approximate f of 3. And that will be a better approximation than if I just did this one step. 
So I'm going to go y minus 5 is equal to 3 times, I'll be plugging in 3, so 3 minus 2. So this would be 8. So actually, we will take one extra step and one extra line. And a better approximation, knowing the slopes of my tangents on my curves, would be that f of 3 is going to be 8 instead of 7. Do you understand kind of the process of this? It's all just like, you know, just go one step at a time and assume that those points that we're finding are points on the actual function, and then use the derivative and assume that, you know, the derivative is going to be true at that point to work your way up to what would be a very close approximation for you know, whatever point we're trying to find. So instead of one straight line, we'll use two straight lines. Now, what would give us a more accurate answer? Exactly. More steps, more accuracy. Now, let's say I have f of 1, and I'm trying to find f of 3, and I want to go four steps. What would be kind of the length of each of my steps? Exactly. It's just kind of like a Riemann sum. You take your distance from 1 to 3, you divide it into these subintervals. So if I want to go four steps and four lines, each step would be like a half. So I would go from f of 1, which I know, and then I would approximate f of 1.5. And then I'd go from 1.5, use the derivative at that function value to find f of 2, and then I would keep going until I got to f of 3. And that would be an even more accurate answer. Maybe it's between the two. It's probably going to be, you know, maybe bigger. Who knows what the actual value is. Okay? So that's it. That's Euler's method for approximating, you know, function values, knowing a derivative, and knowing a point. It's just another kind of solving differential equations method that we've been doing in class, only it's for, you know, having derivatives with with things that we can't find the areas under or the antiderivative. So all we're going to do is just examples of these. These are the problems that you would see on the BC test. They were pulled off of practice BC tests. So we'll start with this one. We'll see if we can do this one and the other two, and then that's it. Not all of our lessons will be this short. Uh, they'll get longer, definitely. But this is kind of just like a one-off. You must know this. Just like the previous lesson on um, L'Hopital's rule was like a one-off lesson. You have to know it. Uh, L'Hopital's will be applied elsewhere, but this won't. This is just kind of random.
first step would be to find f of 1.5. And then knowing that we have f of 1.5 of 2, I can find the slope if that point was on the point of my original function. So I plug in 1.5 and 2, I get negative 0.5. Okay, this is the key step is you are taking each of your steps and you're assuming that that is on your original function. So you will use the derivative to find the tangent equation at that point. So uh, I believe that'll be the answer. So that's step one. This is step two. I'll just move this down. Find f of two. Y minus two is equal to my slope times x minus 1.5. Uh, but I'll plug in 2, so that step is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. That'll be negative 0.25. Add 2, I get 1.75, which is 7 fourths. Cool. Got it. Got it, Mr. Rogers. All right, let's do another one. So y equals f of x is the solution to the differential equation. Knowing the point 1, 0, what is the approximation for f of 2 using two steps of equal length starting at x equals 1? Got it? Okay, good. Uh, two more. That's it. Yeah, you'll be fine. Are we going to have a dispute every, like, eight or five lessons or whatever? Uh, no. No. I'm going to give you a packet, though. And it'll have all the problems that we do in class. Okay. And you'll be able to just do them over again okay. as a review with the answers already given. Yeah. All right, let's do this one real quick. Two more. So they started again at f of 1 is equal to negative 2. And these are all from practice BC tests. So these are exact problems coming off of BC tests. And notice that they're only going two steps each time. So not bad.
I need to subtract, not add, Mr. Messner. So that is negative one. Yeah, it's 2.8, so this is 1.8. Sorry. What'd you get for 1.8 times 0 0.2? 0 0.26. 0 0.36. And then what'd you get when you subtracted? Okay, good. All right, so something you don't have to have a calculator for, but of course you can make lots of mistakes just like I did. All right, last one. All right, that's it. Thank you.